That looks like a good spot. Oh, wow, Vanessa, look at all those stars. We're boldly going where no Suvida Especial has gone before. We're heading into space. Today on Suvida, Suvida Especial. Especial. I'm J.R. Cárdenas. And I'm Vanessa Ramirez. Welcome to Su Vida Especial. Vanessa, just look at that beautiful moon. Yeah. So pretty. So bright. Can you believe it's been almost 50 years since Neil Armstrong set foot on that moon? Hey, that's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. It was a time we would look in the skies and wonder. Do you ever want to experience that wonder again? Yeah, sure, of course. Well, then just head to Prescott and also the Jim and Linda League Planetarium. May the force be with you. And also with you. <laughs> oh, I think that was a mosquito. Oh, wow. Ooh. There is this a little bit of a magical moment that happens in a planetarium. Oftentimes, it might be the kid's first time being in a planetarium. When the lights go down, and all of a sudden, you see what's on the dome. You see the universe. It's this gasping experience. You hear the, the murmurings in the crowd, and well, I get to say, hey, welcome to the solar system. And we get to journey around, see the different planets. We get to go up close and, and see the mountains and valleys on Mars. We get to see the moons around Jupiter. It's one of those visual concepts in the planetarium where you have a lot of bright colors right in your face that you're able to interact with. I'm Eric Edelman, the Jim and Linda Lee Planetarium Coordinator, and essentially that means whatever's involved with the planetarium, I've got my nose in it, I'm there. We're here at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Prescott, Arizona, and so by its name, you might be able to tell already a little bit of what it's passionate about, aeronautics, but that's not all we do. We're very STEM-oriented, so we have a lot of degrees in that STEM field, and one of the big parts of this new STEM building that we're, we're currently standing in here uh, is that we want to sort of open up that knowledge a bit to the, to the local public and like beyond. If uh, you want to learn a little bit more about what the Embry-Riddle students are doing, hey, come by to a planetarium show while you're here, uh, walk through the building, see some of the exciting projects on display. And, and so it's, it's very STEM oriented and we want that STEM to be a part of the public consciousness here. <laughs> In terms of, of making this planetarium a reality on campus, the person that had made that happen uh, was the, the chancellor, uh, Dr. Frank Ayers. As we were working to build this STEM building here, he wanted this uh, planetarium to be the crown jewel, as it were, of the building itself. And one of the exciting things about planetariums these days is that we've gotten into digital projection systems. So it's a multi-pronged vision of enhancing the student's learning of bringing in the public and, and helping uh, to foster a wonderful relationship between the community and Embry-Riddle and also being a place for space and more for the K-12 through students in the area. Most weekends uh, we have free shows for the public where we just like to see people come on by and experience space with us. You got all these telescopes that are looking at the distant, distant universe and getting us all this information that that we can take to a planetarium and visualize in these unique ways. Uh, so it's this incredible collaboration between the scientific community and the scientific communicators that get what you see in planetariums to your eyes. People being in the planetarium, seeing this stuff, getting the same excitement I'm getting, I love that it's contagious. We're all experiencing space in such a unique way together. You know, the planetarium view is really good, but I think we got a great view here, too. Mm-hmm. Is that a shooting star? Yeah, hurry, hurry, make a wish. Um, I wish that you'll come back and join us right after these messages. What else can I wish for? A man? That, too. Can you help me? Subida is brought to you by Chicanos por la Causa. Join the cause for change. Hey, welcome back to Subida Especial. We're enjoying the beautiful show, which is our nighttime sky. Vanessa, did you ever just lay in the grass and look out there and wonder, what's out there? <laughs> yeah, it'll make you feel small, right? Like a grain of sand. Uh -huh. Hey, do you ever think we'll find a space jam? I think so. I think it's a possibility. Yeah. I think space tourism is just around the corner. I mean, if you really look at it, it's only been 116 years since the Wright brothers first took flight. 
I mean, that's a lot of progress. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And if you visit the Pima Air and Space Museum, you'll see all the baby aviation steps that got us to where we are today. Oh, look, 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 that's the space station. What? That's the International Space Station. See that little thing? Sure. Look how fast it's moving. <laughs> We're here in the Space Gallery at the Pima Air and Space Museum, and we have several different displays on several different topics related to space travel, uh, both manned and unmanned. One of the biggest displays that we have that go through this gallery that you'll see here is going to be the history of space travel, the space race. Within the space race exhibit, you'll see some interesting displays, including a full-scale mock-up of the North American X-15, which was a rocket-powered aircraft that set many altitude and speed records during the 1960s. It's a type of aircraft that Neil Armstrong flew before he went into the Apollo and Gemini space programs. We also have a flight suit from the Skylab space missions, which Skylab was our first uh, space station that we built that uh, astronauts went up and spent long-term time in space after the Apollo program. Um, you're also going to see a small moon rock that was donated to us by Frank Borman, who was the commander of the Apollo 8 mission. He grew up here in Tucson, went to Tucson Unified School District, so he chose the Pima Air and Space Museum as the recipient of this moon rock. Um, and you'll also see some stuff related to unmanned space travel. We have a mock-up of the Phoenix Lander, which landed on Mars to search for water several years ago. Um, that program was developed and done here at the University of Arizona in Tucson, so it has a strong local connection. Um, and you will see some other mock-ups of other types of unmanned probes and landers. We also have several authentic flight suits and flight gear and some small artifacts that were flown in space. We have a flight jacket that was worn by Deke Slayton, who was one of the original Mercury astronauts. Something else we have is some space foods on display as well, which were the actual types of foods that astronauts used to eat in space, as well as other smaller artifacts like meteor vests, vests to protect them from small meteor impacts and interesting space items like that. The mural behind us is made out of connects. It is done to represent a painting done by Robert McCall, who was an Arizonan who was a famous artist who did space art as well as artwork for NASA and did promotional artwork for movies such as 2001, Star Trek the Motion Picture, and Tora Tora Tora. So this mural here is a representation of one of his artworks of a space shuttle landing out at Edwards Air Force Base. We also have a couple of uh, full-size rocket engines here on display, which are impressive to see in their size. So we really welcome you to come out here to the Pima Air and Space Museum in Tucson in general. There's a lot to see here at the Air and Space Museum. Please visit our website where you can keep up on the different programs we have. We also have school and education programs that we work with with kids on Saturday weekends that you can learn about and sign up for on the weekend. So we look forward to you visiting Tucson and the Pima Air and Space Museum. Vanessa, did you ever want to be an astronaut? Well, I don't know if I'd be able to handle the food up there. Like, what would a bean burrito be like? Lots of dried beans, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, but it would be pretty cool to look down on Earth from there. I'd be more afraid of being hit by an asteroid or a meteor. Oh, I mean, yeah. either or, they're going to leave a mark. Kind of like the one that hit Earth a few millennia ago. And the one on your face. Pimple scar? It's a crater. Hello, my name is Eduardo Rubio. I'm the tour guide director or head tour guide here at Meteor Crater. We are located in Northern Arizona. Some people come here for the history of the crater. Other people come out here for the geology of the crater, the science, and other people just come here because they want to see what something from outer space made here on the planet Earth. The crater itself is really due to a collision in the asteroid belt by two asteroids that collided. So from this collision, and this was millions of years ago, let this little fragment kind of float around in space for, those mil for millions of years ago, 50,000 years ago, that little fragment made its way to what we now know as the planet Earth and all the way to northern Arizona. And that survived the Earth's atmosphere, and this is the result. 
Believe it or not, the meteorite was half the size of a football field or 150 feet in diameter. The meteorite hit with an explosive force greater than 20 megatons of TNT, a thousand times greater than the Hiroshima bomb. The crater is not famous for its size. It's famous because it's the best preserved and also because it was the first proven impact crater in the world. We have our biggest fragment of meteorite on display. The biggest piece weighs 1,406 pounds. The meteorite itself is 92% iron. It has 7% nickel and a lot of different trace minerals. They have asked me before, don't you get bored talking about the same thing over and over again? Never, because every day is a different experience and learning process. You know, there's many things you ask yourself when you look out into the nighttime sky, like, why are we here? Who else is out there? Are aliens real? Where are the sandwiches? What, is that all you're thinking of? Yeah, I'm hungry, and you packed two bananas and water? I'm doing the vegan thing. Uh, we'll be back with more Suvida right after this, and right after she finds her sandwiches. Next time I'm packing the lunchbox. No! Suvida is brought to you in part by Mega 104.3 and 1011 The Beat. Hola, welcome back to Suvida Especial. I'm Vanessa Ramirez. And I'm J.R. Cardenas. And as I was saying before, the great sandwich search. Hey, I was hungry. <sighs> Anyways, do you believe in aliens? Um, I mean, did you see that video that was posted on YouTube? The one with the alien on the driveway? Yeah. Do you think it was real? I mean, I guess they could be real. That alien had some dance moves that were out of this world. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Hey, they're probably watching us out there right now. Yeah, I doubt it. I think uh, aliens roll up their windows and lock the doors when they fly by Earth. <laughs> Maybe we're not the cats that we think we are. MUFON, its responsibility really is to accept UFO reports, investigate those reports, document the report and the conclusions, and then make that available to anyone who wishes to study the topic. In fact, to date, MUFON has in excess of 100,000 cases over that 50-year span. When an individual makes a report, they do it on MUFON.com then it's distributed to the correct branch or chapter of MUFON. The goal of the investigator is to try to eliminate all of the possibilities to explain that sighting that are conventional. For example, balloons, or stars, or planets, or aircraft. That probably represents about 85% of UFO reports. However, there's that 15% um, that you cannot find an explanation for. No one has really achieved the smoking gun and a live alien or a UFO landed on the White House lawn. We're living in a period of time that is unprecedented in regards to UFOs. Instead of the constant denial and ridiculing, people are being allowed to speak on this. Um, officials are being allowed to speak on this. And in fact, NASA made a bold proclamation that they expect that we will find evidence of life within the next decade. And this is such a turnaround, 180 degrees from, from their past position. And of course, they have to be very conservative, right? They're, they're NASA, they are the nation's uh, space program. And they have to make sure that they have evidence to prove what they're saying. And so um, it's really a big deal that they, they have made this acknowledgement now. And I think that has gone a long way to help with this disclosure or confirmation movement is because it's okay for us to contemplate now that there is life elsewhere. And of course, it's a big leap to say, well, it's, it's visiting Earth now. They're not ready to go there yet. There's going to have to be absolute smoking gun proof of that. Don't be afraid. And if you've had an experience and you have seen something, 
I fully encourage you to make a report to MUFON. Go to MUFON.com. No case is too small, too silly. No, we, we will investigate and take your case very serious. It adds to our body of knowledge and to the historical record. Hey, is it kind of creepy that we could be being watched right now? Oh, I assure you we are, so we better let them know that su vida especial. We'll be right back right after this. I always feel like somebody's watching me. Ah, what is that? Restaurant and food segments on Su Vida are brought to you in part by El Pollo Loco. Welcome back to Su Vida Especial. And today we're all about the final frontier. Are we being replaced by robots? No, JR, space. Oh, yes. Hey, and if we ever go back to space, I think it'll be Mars. The chocolate bar? No, MySpace? No, Mars. Huh, take a look. When anybody walks into the building, we welcome them to the Gallery of Scientific Exploration. And then we offer them to look at any of the exhibits that are on the first floor, like the Curiosity rover or our model of Valles Marineris, the largest canyon on Mars. We also have mission ops, and then we have two NASA-funded clean labs. Currently, Phil Christensen's team is working to test a device called MRIS, which is an infrared spectrometer that will be orbiting Mars, and they're working on this mission in partner with NASA, actually. And then we also welcome them to go upstairs to the second floor, where there are the Center for Meteorite Studies. The Marston Exploration Theater is actually a very exciting sort of experience. Basically, it's a 3D astronomy show. This one, you actually sit in theater-style seats and you put on 3D glasses and we take you through the universe. So we start from the Earth and we take you all the way out to the edge of the universe. It's a very fun experience for kids and it's only $5.50 per ticket. And you know, you can see our shows twice a week, uh, Wednesday nights, Saturday afternoons, and it's a great way to get them excited about space and you know, kind of spark their interest in science. My name is Jonathan Hill and I'm a mission planner at ASU's Mars Space Flight Facility. At the Mars Space Flight Facility, our specialty is studying what Mars is made out of using infrared images taken by our various cameras that we've sent to Mars. So we have scientists studying the data, we have computer scientists helping us analyze the data, and we even have educators helping us share that information that we've learned with the public. When you walk in uh, past our rover model, you can also see models of the various instruments that we built and sent to Mars over the years. These days, we're updating the instrument that we had on the two rovers uh, to go to other places in the solar system. So we have another version of that that's currently at an asteroid, and we're building another version that's going to go to some special asteroids out by Jupiter. When we're studying Mars and we're trying to figure out whether life ever formed there or not, it's one of these big picture questions of whether or not we're alone in the universe. The most exciting thing we've ever discovered here, uh, what used to be a hot spring on Mars. And that was really exciting because on Earth, hot springs are really good places for life to form and for bacteria to thrive. And so if life ever formed on Mars, that's probably a, a place that it might have taken hold. Visitors can come by the Mars Space Flight Facility and see our galleries and kind of see our scientists in action working in our labs during normal business hours, 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. And it's completely free of charge. They're welcome to come in and catch some of our scientists in the hallway and, and kind of ask them how they're actually exploring Mars on that particular day. Hey, I'd go to Mars. No traffic, no telemarketers, and I'd probably weigh less on Mars, too. Really? No gravity. Ooh, sign me up. Hey, if you ever think you're going into space, a trip to the Arizona Science Center may be all the inspiration you need. Take a look. No gravity, no trail marketers, no Vanessa. Uh, mi nombre es Jason O'Neill, soy el gerente aquí en el Centro de Ciencias en Arizona. Soy el gerente del Teatro y del Planetario. Parte de mi trabajo es yo tengo que asegurar que todas las películas están listas para los huéspedes y la gente que viene al, al centro. Y también en el planetario tenemos que monitor el sonido y el, el, los shows de láser y otros programas que tenemos aquí en el planetario. 
We have all of our shows that come into the Science Center. Right now we have Apollo 11 celebrating the 50th anniversary of the first humans to step foot on the moon. I'm also the manager of the Planetarium where we have tours of the solar system, uh, stars of the pharaohs, as well as our laser shows. We have Symphony of the Stars and we have after hour events, all kinds of fun laser shows here at the Science Center. And I'm in charge of making sure that they go off without any problems. Well, we have to make sure that our shows are ready for our guests when they come in every day. We have several shows throughout the day. Again, I mentioned we have Grand Tour of the Solar System. We have uh, Stars of the Pharaohs shows. We also have laser shows where we have to go in and operate all the lighting, the sound, ensure that the projectors are running correctly, and we have to interact with the guests. Y yo creo que el Grand Tour del Sistema Solar es lo más popular con los niños, con los chamacos, porque ellos pueden ver todas las planetas y las lunas y estrellas y partes del Sistema Solar uh, como un tour, un viaje entre el sol Sistema Solar. So inside of our state-of-the-art Dorns Planetarium, we project the background of the universe and then we put these lasers up on this dome. They're interactive with great music. So right now we have a really good show called Symphony of the Stars. It's the, imagine all the last great movies of the last 20, 30 years. Uh, we put that music on background with a very, very good laser show. And then of course, after hours, we have lasers and liquor. So all of our parents or adults can come out and enjoy the Science Center as well and maybe have a cocktail while they enjoy the laser show. And once our guests leave the planetarium, they can engage with other activities here in the Science Center. In my digital world, we have a really good interactive exhibit called Sun Earth Universe. They can build spacecraft as well as interact with different exhibits and learn even more about the solar system and the universe. So we have lots of interactive activities here. Everything you want to know about space right here at your fingertips. All summer long, we're going to have programs set up where you can come out, use telescopes, see the stars, build rockets in our Create Interactive Space, as well as come and watch our show Apollo 11 and visit our planetarium and giant screen theater. And, and here at the Arizona Science Center, we like to inspire, engage, and educate curious minds through science. And I'd like to say curious minds of all ages. So come on down to the Science Center and visit us all year long. We're open 363 days out of the year. And you can buy tickets online or once you get here. All right, Vanessa, time to pack up and head back to Earth. Uh, JR, we never left Earth. Well, I did. I was in a rocket ship cruising with some tunes across the universe away from you. <laughs> well, maybe one day, JR, but not today. We'll see you on the next Subida Especial. Right here on Earth. Yes. <laughs>